to another edition of Conversations with CASA, a monthly news blog produced by Texas CASA that examines issues and trends in our child welfare system. Today, our show is a little bit different than normal. Today, our Executive Director of Communications and Awareness, Leslie Morton, is going to be talking to me about the Texas CASA 30-year anniversary. Leslie, it's so nice to see you on this side of the camera for a change. I know. I'm usually on the other side, so this is going to be fun. So you say. Um, so I say. <laughs> well, let me start off by wishing you and everybody at Texas Casa happy anniversary. Um, we have been around for 30 years. Yeah. We were formed in 1989, and a lot has happened. So, Vicki, I will be the formal interviewee here, interviewer. Okay. Um, yeah, so tell us about how Texas Casa was formed and a little bit about that story. Super. So in, um, well, we were formed in 1989, you just said that, um, by a wonderful woman named Jane Piper. Jane Piper had formerly been, I believe, a, a volunteer in the Dallas program, um, which is one of the first programs formed. And then later on, Jane moved to Austin. And at that time, she was friends with the Dallas director and the Houston director. And she came and was associated with the Travis County program. Um, I don't think she was volunteering, but she saw a need to have, one, more CASA programs in the state, two, a mechanism to create and collect the data that was being um, generated by these programs, and three, another mechanism to um, keep programs from fighting each other for the state dollars that were available. Mm. She thought one um, entity that could, one statewide entity representing all CASA programs could fulfill those functions and act as the messenger to the state's leadership to bring in more money so that programs wouldn't have to fight each other for funding. That makes uh, sense. It makes a lot of sense. So yeah. in 1989, she created Texas CASA. I think they started with her initially, six months, no pay. Mm -hmm. It was passion. Um, then she had one staff, and here we are today. We have a staff of 33, actually mm -hmm. 35. Mm -hmm. We have some people who work off-site, as you know. Um, we've gone from a focus strictly on expanding the number of programs from 13 to now 72, mm -hmm. um, to serving a, you know, a few hundred children, to now serving almost 30,000 children, from having a few hundred volunteers mm -hmm. to now having almost 11,000 volunteers mm -hmm. to providing national, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, high quality studies, high quality resources and supports for programs, um, a monthly news blog, go figure, um, becoming technologically aware to be able to leverage online learning to enhance the education of not only CASA staff, but CASA volunteers and make that um, accessible to programs, um, to providing and becoming a resource for legislators. In addition to the high quality level of public policy advocacy um, that Texas CASA is now able to provide by, by reaching out into the CASA network and hearing from volunteers and staff and directors and board members the kinds of problems that are being experienced as well as the successes so we can collaborate with our partners, Child Protective Services, on the successful areas and help maximize those and through them with Child Protective Services getting that information to help make the system change that needs to happen to advocate for the best interests of children. And where we can't come to agreement, we work with other stakeholder groups so the collaboration is a big part of what we do as well as um, the work that we do with the legislature. Mm -hmm. So um, we've gone from a powerful idea to a powerful entity. In terms of when I say powerful, I mean the power of the network to create the kind of change that we want to see in children's lives mm -hmm. started with one person. When they say one person can make a difference, mm -hmm. it's Jane Piper. Yeah, she's amazing. I mean, we all love her. Yeah. And you're obviously very passionate about this because this is what we do. So in the communications department, one thing that we um, are really aware of is that our, our vision is cost of being a household word. So almost yeah. four years ago, we started the marketing campaign and that's been extremely successful. And then having people understand about Texas CASA, that we're not only the hub for the local programs, but we're thought leaders in the state. We're so. thought leaders in the child welfare arena. So I've been here almost seven years and I'm just 
crazy proud of the work that we did. Oh, ditto. In fact, we, it was. I think it was you started the conversation of the Casa Way mm -hmm. because we have this passionate belief that we can make the qualitative difference. The, when things people say that can't be done, we say, yes, we can. Mm -hmm. And we know we're part of the solution, and so we roll up our sleeves and we work to get it done. Right. And then we work to leverage the talent and the expertise of the CASA network out there to make things happen that people never dreamed about before. Yeah. Um, so but, I, it, that was right when I started, when we started to form yeah, and figure exactly. out what the CASA way was. Yep. Um, it's a creed and what it means to us. So I think we're going to go ahead and show the two-minute video because we really did a great job of explaining what it means to us. And we'll show that and then we'll cut back to Super. our conversation. Okay. A few years ago, we started using the term, the CASA way, in reference to how we approach the work we do, how we handle business at the state level, our attitude when we created a project or lobbied for change at the Capitol, essentially, the way we lived. So at one of our staff retreats, we worked through the process of creating a statement or creed to describe what the CASA way really meant. Here's what we agreed upon. The CASA way. We have an uncompromising belief that we will achieve what others think is impossible and that each of us is an essential part of the solution. The Texas child welfare system is inherently flawed. Studies of other systems in other states and countries offer a similar picture. There is no perfect way to keep kids safe and avoid traumatic experiences when you're working with families in need. All we can do is our best. But with such a low bar, how will we ever create real, positive change and empower the children we serve to have happy and fulfilling lives? The Casa Way Creed was created as an intentional foundation as a way to raise the bar on how we do business in the CASA world. It is more than a statement. It is a call to action and a declaration of possibility. Whether you are a volunteer, staff person, board member, or stakeholder, in every place that you go, be it a courtroom, foster home, presentation at a church, testifying during a hearing at the Capitol, or managing your staff, all things are possible, and each one of us is an essential part of the solution. We are asking the children that leave the system to be brave, to rise up, to overcome sometimes horrendous trauma, to go to college and be successful. This may sometimes seem like an impossible task. If we ask this of the children in our care, then shouldn't we expect the same sort of effort and bravery from ourselves? So that was, um that was very empowering and it's it, it makes my heart flutter when I think about you know we believe that we can achieve what others think is impossible exactly and there are people that think that that's crazy but how else are we going to change the child welfare system how are we going to change our world if we don't believe that exactly exactly so, yeah if you, you what is you hear me say this a lot I wish I was the first person that said it I'm not I can't lie and claim it because I don't lie um, but the expression that you hear me say a lot is only mediocre people are always at their best. Mm -hmm. The same as systems. Only mediocre systems are always at their best. There is no such thing as that plateau of excellence. It's like once you realize you, if you're committed, mm -hmm. well, another expression is it's not the skill, it's the will. Yeah. There are a lot of people with degrees, they can't make stuff happen because they don't believe. Mm -hmm. um, it's that belief that will make you find the way because it's important to you. And what I love about what we do and what we have here at Texas Casa mm -hmm. is we have people who are committed. Yeah. They're high achievers and strong believers, and it makes the Casa way a reality. Yeah, absolutely. And recently we've had the pleasure of putting together a report. It's called the Casa Evolution, and we'll um, show a, a, what that looks like, but the volunteer, the VOL and um, Evolution stands for volunteers. And so our department was instrumental in getting with all the local programs to see what initiatives they've had in the last five years and then pulling together the things that we've done. And for me, it was like, oh my goodness, right. look what we've done. I mean, we've got a lot, a lot more to do, but it's really impressive. So you wanna talk a little bit about that report? Sure, and I wanna talk about um, when we say we, we is the CASA community. Mm -hmm. We is the collective energy 
and the passion and compassion of the 72 programs and all the staff and volunteers out there. Um, one of the things that um, I heard when I first became executive director at Texas CASA, when people talked about the things they wanted to see us do, in addition to an awareness campaign to make mm -hmm. CASA a household name, they talked about wanting research to really show the difference that CASA advocacy made. Um, and so we, along with the University of Texas, um, what was their division? Child and Family Services mm -hmm. or something? Um, commissioned a study, uh, worked with them on a study that actually involved um, using data from the Child Protective Services system to match at cohorts and apples to apples, et cetera. So we're, we're looking at like kids, children with a CASA, children without a CASA, um, to see what difference CASA volunteer advocacy made in the areas of permanency, safety, well-being. Um, we had the, the Child Protective Services impact system to draw our data from. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, didn't tell us. Uh, it couldn't make clear the info. They didn't have the information that right. we needed in, uh, in, in those areas. Right. Um, it did give us some indicators about things that we could do um, better, yeah. differently. And so we've used that study to begin to really frame up again what we've done and where we're going. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at we're, we're looking at the efforts that Casa Texas Casa has um, not only looked at the local program efforts, but just in the time that, um, the last seven years since we've been here, Texas CASA was the one that strongly advocated in 2013 for the reduction in the use of psychopharmaceuticals on mm -hmm. children in care. Um, we're the ones that have advocated consistently for normalizing mm -hmm. um, the experience of children in the foster care system and allowing the foster parent to have more control over what the child is able to do in a normalized, you know, to, to have their reality be more normalized. Right. Um, the whole issue of collaborative family engagement um, and, and training CASA volunteers as well as uh, staff and Child Protective Services caseworkers on how to find uh, family and how to engage family and fictive kin to create the support that a child needs and each other needs to support that child so that no child exit ca exits care alone without right. some mechanism right. of support, some system of support, right. which is happening too often for kids who age out of care. And then as we look down the road to the future, we're looking at now quantifying and qualifying those indicators of permanency, safety, and well-being in a way that will better allow us to be able to measure that. Um, we're looking at ways to enhance, you know, which is all connected, the quality of advocacy that volunteers are able to provide. We know because the study showed us that we get some of the most difficult cases. The judges tell us that, the study shows, um, mm -hmm. shows that uh, information Absolutely. to us. So it's like, how do we provide, as cases get even more complicated, how do we provide the kind of advocacy and the kinds of services and tools that will absolutely support that volunteer and that program to provide the best service for those children coming into the system? So we're at 30 years now, the next 10 are going to be yeah. amazing. And 10 years beyond that, supersonic. And beyond that, we're still going to be looking for what is the better way. Right. Because only mediocre systems are always at their best. And we don't push mediocrity. Absolutely. And, you know, as we say over and over again, um, I was a CASA volunteer for Travis County for a couple of years. And this is the premier volunteer opportunity because um, you have a, a person that we would call just an average citizen. You don't have to have special qualifications. That's right. And we train you and we work with you and we walk beside you so that you can serve that child. So it's a really, it's such, it's such an important role. It is a role, again, you're advocating for a child's best interest. You're advocating to change a child's future. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's, again, you don't need a degree to do it. You just need the passion to yeah. do it. The willingness and desire to help change a child's trajectory, to help turn a bad experience um, and get them on to a better path on a better road and a better vision of themselves in that process. Yeah. And we are the state membership organization, but if you're interested in becoming a volunteer, go to um, www.becomeacasa.org and you can put in the zip code and find the closest local program. All right, you, so you said that just like a communications executive director. Um, <laughs> and you too throw fast, that information though, I said out a little there. fast. Just gonna say, so you want to slow One it more down, time. say it well, yeah, there you go. <laughs>
Uh, www.becomeacasa.org. Thank you. And one more question. Sure. So, if you could have anything, if you could have one wish for this world that we live in, this child welfare community, what would it be? Mm. Hmm. Oh, that's a good one. My first wish would be world peace. And I'll, if we're not going to get it for the world, if we're just talking about our CASA community in yeah. Texas, Texas peace. Because we are so big, whatever we do creates mm. a footprint for the nation. It's powerful. Yeah. If we had peace, that would mean the kinds of services, people would be operating from a different place, mm -hmm. fully from here, um, as they relate to each other. Families would have the supports they need, so that level of crisis that, that people go into that results in abuse and neglect of children mm -hmm. wouldn't be there because yeah. they'd have peace. Yeah. Um, the kinds of supports that children need for any aspect of their life would be there because people would be operating from a place of peace. And peace is synonymous to me with love because there's a love that comes with peace. Mm -hmm. um, and if we just move from that, well, we say we're the cost of ways, so we it. have an uncompromising belief that we can achieve That's what it. others think is impossible. That's it. So, all right. Good job. Well, thank you. Okay. And thank cheers. you for joining. <laughs> right. Well, here. here Here's cheers. to 30 years and 30 more. 30 more. Thank you. They thank say you, you have to drink, otherwise it's okay. not a good toast. All right. This is not champagne. I was going to okay. say. Nor is it gin or vodka. <laughs> <laughs> it's some kind of, no, it's, it's just water. water. It's water. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us on this edition of Conversations with Casa. We'll see you next time.